Do you ever find yourself scrolling through Instagram and feeling a little bit jealous of all those beautiful photos? Well, I'm about to give you a little secret that they are not born this way. Today I'm going to show you how you can start to turn your ordinary photos into extraordinary work of art by giving you a very quick Photoshop crash course that's applicable. And not just everything which you forget after anyway. We will look at the five basics of photo editing. I'll then show you which tool to use for which editing step. And finally, we'll explore what to actually learn first in Photoshop. After this video, you can open up your own images and make them stand out right away. All right, let's get into the juicy stuff. So we got five basics of photo editing that you do need to know in order to make your photos look awesome. First up is cropping, which means to get rid of any unwanted parts of the picture and give it a better composition. Next up, we've got color correction, which allows you to tweak the colors in your image and make them pop. Trust me, this can make a world of difference in your photos. Then we have exposure adjustments, which we use to brighten up or darken down certain parts of the image. And lastly, we've got sharpening and noise reduction, which means to add sharpness and reduce any unwanted grain or noise in your image. This is especially important for those of us that are shooting in low light conditions. So now we know the basic edits, so let's finally open up Photoshop and see how we can actually achieve them. Let's load in a photo into Photoshop. Head to Edit, Open and find a photo you like. All right, let's dive into the basic tools that you need to edit photos in Photoshop. These basic tools are the crop tool, the hue saturation and curve adjustments, the healing brush tool and the camera raw filter, which for the purpose of this video, I am calling a tool. Now, don't worry about the interface just yet. We're gonna get there later when we bring everything back together. The first photo editing basic is cropping. Therefore, the first tool we'll talk about is the crop tool, which allows you to remove boring parts of your photo. The crop tool, among other tools, is here on the left-hand side. Click and now simply create the composition you want. Once you cropped your photo, hit enter. Step one, cropping a photo, done. Next up, we set another basic editing step is color correction. For that, we have the hue saturation adjustment to start with. You would think that this also would be here with my other tools, right? It's not, just accept that for now. It'll all make sense at the end of the video. The hue saturation adjustment is at the bottom right, just under adjustment layers. That tool lets you control hue, saturation and lightness of your colors. You can choose to affect your whole photo. Ooh, that's kind of fun. But more realistically, you'll want to target a specific color. If you click on Master, you can select a specific color to target, like so, and now the sliders will only affect that particular color. You could also hit Colorize and create a monochrome effect like for Sapia or something like that. For now, just follow along. We'll bring everything together in an actual example towards the end of the video. So we cropped, we checked hue and saturation. Now we need to fix exposure or brightness. There are several tools, but I suggest to start with the curves adjustment. The curves adjustment or curves is also located in the corner under adjustments. If you have never seen that, don't worry. Let's make the photo black and white for a moment to explain curves. If you look at my photo, you can see there are many dark parts, like the shadows here and here. The dark areas of my photo are represented on the left hand side within curves. So because I have a lot of dark tones in my image, I have this graph in the background, which is your histogram, go up. If I make the image darker, you can see that now I only have darks as my histogram only has content on the left hand side. On the other side, if I make it bright, you can see that my image only has bright information, so to speak. So how do we use that? In our image, I have the shadows, the midtones and the highlights, and I can control them using this line right here. If I click and bring that curve up, I'll brighten my image. Bringing it down will darken it. On the curve is now an adjustment point. So say we want to only make the already bright part of the image brighter, we click into that area and drag it up. This creates an S shape, which is an easy way to add a contrast and make your photo pop. If we don't want to influence the shadows, we can just click into that area and drag it back into the middle. If you want to remove a point, just click and drag it out of the graph. You can also switch from RGB to, for instance, red. And now you can control how much red is in the bright and dark parts of my photo. I can remove reds from my shadows and add red in my highlights if that is what I want to do. Play with curves to adjust your brightness as needed. Remember, now we are just looking at the end of the video we'll actually be using. Ooh, that sounds wrong. So, cropping, saturation and brightness done. What's left is sharpening and noise reduction. You could do this in so many ways, but early on I suggest to simply use the camera raw filter. This camera raw filter is simply located under filter and camera raw filter. If you have ever seen Lightroom, this looks basically the same. And on first glance, it even looks easier than Photoshop itself, right? Easy slider, so why don't we just use that? I'll get there. For now, you can just head to the details section and add as much sharpening as you like and as much noise reduction as you like. 
You can zoom in using the selection right here. Hit OK once done. So we just used five common Photoshop tools to go through the five common basics of editing. But we do need to mention one more tool that you will want to use. Let's check out the Healing Brush tool, which is for removing unwanted objects such as lens, dirt or smaller objects in your image. Note this has the word tool in it. So again, it's on the left hand side, just like the crop tool, whereas adjustments were here. Say I want to remove these things here in the foreground. Select the size and the hardness. I usually keep it around 75% and simply go over the objects to remove. Gone. Use this to clean your images from sensor dust or whatever. This works really well with smaller objects. All right, so we covered the basics of photo editing and the most common tools that you can use for them, but how do we bring it together and what should you actually learn first when it comes to Photoshop? Well, I suggest to start with the very basics of the software, which is the interface, layers and layer masks, which is where the true power of Photoshop lies, and then how to basically import and export a photo. So let's bring everything we just went through and learned together in sequence and go through it. As before, we open the photo by going to edit and open and find the photo that we want to open. Go to the top to window, workspace and choose essentials to see what I see. The interface is split into a few different sections. You've got your menu bar up top, which includes all of the different menus like file, edit and image. Then you've got your toolbar on the left, which includes all the different tools you can use, including the crop tool and healing brush tool that you have already seen. In the middle, you've got your photo, which is where you'll be doing all your editing. And finally, on the right, you've got your panels, which include things like layers and adjustments. Remembering our steps, we will start with cropping. Use the crop tool and, well, crop. <laughs> Hit enter and done. Next, let's create a hue saturation layer to work on color correction. Now it is time to see the power of Photoshop. Notice how the hue saturation adjustment layer is now on top of our image. Here's how this works. Those are layers. Our image is a layer and the adjustment is a layer. You always look from the top. So let's say I bring my saturation to zero, which we have seen before. Then I see this. However, if I grab my image layer and drag it on top of our adjustment, suddenly the image is in color again. Why? Because now the adjustment is below our image. So the image is kind of blocking the view to the adjustment, so to speak. It's like a stack of paper, in which case you always see the one that's on top. This is important because now we can use the power of layer masks. Let's put the image layer below our adjustment again and say I want to take the color out of the sky, but not the foreground. How do we do this? See that the adjustment layer has a little white box. This is a layer mask. If you select it, select a brush from your tools panel, choose a black color to paint with and paint where you don't want the color to show up. You can hide the adjustments from parts of your image. Look at the layer mask. Wherever I painted black in the image, the mask will also become black and this hides the effect from those areas. The typical phrase everyone is using is black conceals, white reveals. Use this. In our example, I removed the effect from the foreground. Note, if you select your image and paint on it, you will actually paint black. So make sure you select the layer mask. So we have cropping, color, next is brightness. Let's create a curve adjustment you know already. This will become another layer on top of my other layers. I can now change the brightness and use the same technique to hide the effect from my highlights as an example. I can also use this to add some bright spots to my image to create interest. The cool thing, I can create another curve adjustment layer if I want to and this time brighten things up. Say I only want to brighten up this area right here. I could now use a black brush and hide the effect from everywhere else as we did before, right? Well, I could, but it's a lot of work. Instead, select the layer mask of that adjustment and hit Command or Control and I on your keyboard when you have the mask selected. And with that, invert it. Everything that was white will become black. And remember, black conceals. So the adjustment is hidden. Instead of using a black brush, we can now use a white brush to bring out the effect wherever we want. In the same curve, we can head to the reds and drag them up and therefore adding some red tone into that area. Remember that you can have as many layers as you want and don't be afraid to play around. It's all non-destructive. You can even drag other images on top of yours if you want to create compositions. But if you're just starting out, I would recommend to wait a little bit before you do compositions and get the basics down first. Sweet, so now we can reduce noise and add some sharpness. If I go to a filter and camera raw filter, we see nothing. Well, in fact, what we do see is the layer mask because that is what I had selected when I opened the filter. Filters don't work with adjustment layers, they work with image layers. So we need to first transform what we did into an image layer. This is easy. Select the top layer that you have right now and hit Command or Control, Option, Shift and E on your keyboard. This will take everything that you can see right now, all the adjustments and the way the photo looks and copy it on its own image layer. 
Now we can open the filter. Use the sharpening and noise reduction as you like and explore around a bit. There are amazing easy to use functions in this, like adding a dark outline to your image. But once you're happy, hit OK. With the exact same methods and a little bit more time, I created this image. Once you're done, head to File, Export, select the file type like JPEG for a more usable file size and export. You now know the five basics for photo editing, which tools to use for them. You know where the tools are, you understand layer masks and layers in general. And you can now jump in and edit your own images. What are you waiting for? Note that I did this video in this style because I thought it's much more applicable and useful rather than to just go through all the tools Photoshop has to offer. Because that you'll most likely forget anyway, because I did back in the days. Now if you want to continue your learning journey, Google things such as blend modes, color balance, clone stamp tool, gradients and Photoshop filters. Because these would be the next five tools I would suggest to get familiar with. Or let me know in the comments if you want me to cover them and I shall in a future video. If you like this video, do make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you so desire. And as always, please, please stay safe and have a good one.